Hello. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this. Uh, thank you um, for being here. Uh, this is an, a special program, special event dedicated to Lorca, the poet Federico Garcia Lorca, and it's called Lorca Universal, and it's part of our um, series of events in Transforming with Poetry. Today, we will have um, a number of poets um, reflecting upon uh, Lorca, his work, his life, uh, but at the end, you know, the second half, we will also have um, some uh, open word performances by, by different poets as well. So welcome to everybody and uh, welcome to obviously Mike Bainham, who is the organizer of the event today and he's going to be taking over from me in a minute. And um, we also have the director of the Cervantes Institute, uh, Pedro Eusebio. Um, who, you know, um, it's a pleasure to have him here to say a few words about, about Federico Garcia Lorca and how important it is in Spanish, in Hispanic culture, uh, the figure of this universal poet. Welcome, uh, Pedro. Thank you very much. It's a, a, a great pleasure to be with you today here in Transforming with Poetry. And especially when we uh, celebrate the poetry of Federico Garcia Lorca. It's very difficult to say what means Federico Garcia Lorca for the Spanish and for the world culture, and especially for literature and poetry. He was and he is a universal poet who brought to, 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 to America first and then to the world the essence of Spain. The essence of Spain, because he is a reflect of the, of the Andalusian culture, the special relation he had with the gypsies, with the, the, the people, with the humble people of Andalusia, and afterwards also with the, with the uh, experience in the uh, Residencia de Estudiantes, with the surrealism, he made a special uh, process where the tradition, the folklore from Andalusia, the new uh, um, tendencies in Europe were all together in his poetry. He then went to, to New York, to Argentina, to Cuba, to many places. He was universal, not only in his writing, but all, also in his life. So it's for us an example of dedication to a, literature, a passionate person, and also an example he, because he was very determined with the role of transforming society through uh, culture and education. One of the uh, main aspects of uh, Lorca's work was uh, the trabajo, the work he made with La Barraca the, as the poster of this uh, event, where he, with other people, with other intellectuals and educated people, tried to bring culture to everybody in Spain. So for us, what to say is our most uh, one of the most universal uh, artists and poets of our history in Spain. We are very proud of his legacy and we are very happy today to have those poets that will be remember, remembering the works of Jardí Alorca, giving to you the emotion of this great writer. And uh, thank you very much for inviting me to attend this uh, uh, event. It's a great pleasure. Thank you very much, Antonio. And uh, I hope, I am sure you will enjoy a lot Garcia Lorca. He's an endless poet. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, Pedro. Muchísimas gracias por tu presencia y esperamos um, contar con, contigo en otras oportunidades. Y, y bueno, es un orgullo, es un placer tener aquí a, al director de Instituto Cervantes. Um, Mike, uh, we were going to say something about the figure of Garcia Lorca. The, um, you know, we are trying to remember his figure, but also to think about the period of time in which he lived and the challenges that he faced. Yeah, he was a poet that, uh, who, you know that he had a very tragic death. He was killed by uh, nationalist forces, by phalangistas in 1936, uh, at the beginning of the Spanish Civil War. But there were many other people, there were many other thousands and thousands who suffered persecution like him. So he's a symbol of, uh, of that resistance, uh, that resistance against uh, fascism. And he's a symbol, like Pedro emphasized, 
of uh, the role of art in transforming society, which is very much what inspired the, uh, the organization that leads these uh, events, Transforming with Poetry. And I'm sure we, we all have here some kind of personal connection with, with Loka and his work that will come uh, at some point in the event. I don't want to, I don't want to spill the beans. <laughs> and uh, uh, Mike, uh, over, over to you. Perhaps we should um, remind our, our friends and audience here, um, the participants, uh, mainly in this order, mainly in this order, in today's event. Over to you, Mike. Thank you so much. Okay. So welcome to Lorca Universal. Universal, because we are focused on Lorca, not as a local or a provincial or a national poet, but as a poet who belongs to the world. So there will be four interwoven strands. Mourning Lorca, he met a tragic death, a violent death. Celebrating Lorca. Celebrating Lorca. And also after Lorca, we're all after Lorca, thinking about that. Bienvenido a Lorca Universal. Universal porque el enfoque no estará, no estará Lorca típico, Lorca local, Lorca provincial ni nacional. Un poeta que pertenece al mundo. Habrá cuatro temas o hilos entretejidos lamentando a Lorca, celebrando a Lorca, traduciendo a Lorca y después de Lorca. Bueno, the first, um, the first performance will be my, my old friend, mi amigo de antaño, el poeta Jesús Rey, recitará Elegía Primera de Miguel Hernández sobre el asesinato de García Lorca. My old friend, the poet Jesús Rey, will recite Miguel Hernández's first elegy on the murder of Lorca. So welcome, Jesús. Bienvenido. Federico García Lorca, poeta. Atraviesa la muerte con herrumbrosas lanzas y en traje de cañón las parameras, donde cultiva el hombre raíces y esperanzas y llueve sal y esparce calaveras. Verdura de las eras, ¿qué tiempo prevalece la alegría? El sol pudre la sangre, la cubre de asechanzas y hace brotar la sombra más sombría. El dolor y su manto vienen una vez más a nuestro encuentro y una vez más al callejón del llanto lluviosamente entro. Siempre me veo dentro de esta sombra de acíbar revocada, amasada con ojos y bordones, que un candil de agonía tiene puesto a la entrada y un rabioso collar de corazones. Llorar dentro de un pozo, en la misma raíz desconsolada del agua, del sollozo del corazón quisiera. Donde nadie me viera la voz ni la mirada, ni restos de mis lágrimas me viera. Entro despacio, se me cae la frente despacio, el corazón se me desgarra despacio y despaciosa y negramente vuelvo a llorar al pie de una guitarra. Entre todos los muertos de elegía, sin olvidar el eco de ninguno, por haber resonado más en el alma mía, la mano de mi llanto escoge uno. Federico García, hasta ayer se llamó, Polvo se llama. Ayer tuvo un espacio bajo el día, que hoy el hoyo le da bajo la grama. Tanto fue 
tanto fuiste y ya no eres, tu agitada alegría que agitaba columnas y alfileres de tus dientes arrancas y sacudes y ya te pones triste y solo quieres ya el paraíso de los ataúdes. Vestido de esqueleto, durmiéndote de plomo, de indiferencia armado y de respeto, te veo entre tus cejas sin asomo. Se ha llevado tu vida de palomo que ceñía de espuma y de arrullos el cielo y las ventanas como un raudal de pluma, el viento que se lleva las semanas. Primo de las manzanas, no podrá con tu savia la carcoma, no podrá con tu muerte la lengua del gusano, y para dar salud fiera a su poma, Eligirá tus huesos el manzano. Cegado el manantial de tu saliva, hijo de la paloma, nieto del ruiseñor y de la oliva, serás, mientras la tierra vaya y vuelva, esposo siempre de la siempre viva, estiércol padre de la madre selva. Qué sencilla es la muerte, qué sencilla pero qué injustamente arrebatada. No sabe andar despacio y acuchilla cuando menos espera su turbia cuchillada. Tú, el más firme edificio destruido. Tú, el gavilán más alto desplomado. Tú, el más grande rugido, callado y más callado y más callado. Caiga tu alegre sangre de granado como un derrumbamiento de martillos feroces sobre quien te detuvo mortalmente. Salivazos y hoces caigan sobre la mancha de su frente. Muere un poeta y la creación se siente herida y moribunda en las entrañas. Un cósmico temblor de escalofrío mueve temiblemente las montañas. Un resplandor de muerte, la matriz de los ríos. Oigo pueblos de ayes y valles de lamentos. Ve un bosque de ojos nunca injutos, avenidas de lágrimas y mantos. Y en torbellinos de hojas y de vientos, lutos tras otros lutos y otros lutos. Llantos tras otros llantos y otros llantos. No aventarán no arrastrarán tus huesos, volcán de rope, trueno de panales, poeta entretejido, dulce, amargo, que al calor de los besos sentiste entre dos largas fileras de puñales, largo amor, muerte larga, fuego largo. Por hacer a tu muerte compañía, vienen poblando todos los rincones del cielo y de la tierra, bandadas de armonía, relámpagos de azules vibraciones. Crota los granizados a montones, batallones de flautas, panderos y gitanos, ráfagas de abejorros y violines, tormentas de guitarras y pianos, Irrupciones de trompas y clarines. Pero el silencio puede más que tanto instrumento. Silencioso, desierto, polvoriento en la muerte desierta, parece que tu lengua, que tu aliento, 
nos ha cerrado el golpe de una puerta. Como si paseara con tu sombra, paseo con la mía, por una tierra que el silencio alfombra, que el ciprés apetece más sombría. Rodea mi garganta tu agonía como un hierro de horca y pruebo una bebida funeraria. Tú sabes, Federico García Lorca, que soy de los que gozan una muerte diaria. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Antonio, can you share the translation? Yes, we are going to show the translation on the screen, um, which is going to be read by uh, Mike and it's his translation. And the, the picture that you saw before was um, that of uh, Federico García Lorca and Miguel Hernández, um, another universal Spanish poet who tragically died. Um, <laughs> during the second half of the civil war, you have him there on the right. Over to you, Mike, with the translation. First elegy to Federico Garcia Lorca, poet. Death, with its rusty lances, dressed up as a cannon, crosses the high moorlands, where men cultivate roots and hopes, where it rains salt, scattering skulls. Green the tilled fields. What weather prevails over joy? Sun rots the blood, covers it with lurking traps and sprouts the most dismal of shadows. Pain, cloaked pain, comes out once more to meet us. And once again, I enter the rainy alleyway of tears. I see myself forever inside this shadow, plastered with bitter aloes, kneaded with eyes and tolling bells, a candle of agony placed at the entrance and a raging necklace of hearts. I would like to cry at the bottom of a well, down in the very despairing root of water, the heart sob, where nobody would see my voice nor my gaze, not even the remains of my tears would see me. I step inside slowly, my forehead caves in slowly, slowly my heart is ripped out and slowly, blackly, I return to weep at the foot of a guitar. All those who are dead and fit for elegy, and I not forgetting an echo of a single one of them, but his having resonated more with my soul, my lament takes this one by the hand. His name till yesterday was Federico Garcia, his name now dust. Yesterday he had his space in the sunlight, who today is bequeathed to the grave under grass. There was so much of him. You were so much and now you are not. Your frantic happiness, which would rattle columns and needles, you tear out from your teeth and shake. And now you are sad and all you want is the paradise of coffins. Dressed as a skeleton in your leaden sleep, armed with indifference and respect, I can see you between your eyebrows if I lean over. Your life has been snatched away, you, male dove, who wrapped the sky and windows in foam and cooing, the wind like a torrent of feathers carrying away the weeks. Cousin to apples, the woodworm could do nothing against your sap, nor the worm's tongue prevail over your death. To safeguard the wild heath health of its fruit, the apple tree will choose your bones. The wellspring of your saliva is blocked, dove's child, grandson of the nightingale and the olive, in the comings and goings of the earth, you would always be husband to the immortel, blood manure for the honeysuckle. How simple death is, how simple and yet so unfairly it snatches away. It doesn't know how to go slowly and at the most unexpected moment sticks its sneaky blade in. You, the most firmly planted building destroyed, you, the highest flying sparrow hawk brought down, your great roar silenced, again silenced, once again silenced. 
joyful as the pomegranate tree, let your blood demolished, demolished in a fierce torrent of hammer blows fall on the one who halted your life. Let gobs of spit and sickle blows fall on his stained forehead. A poet dies and creation feels the wound, feels the death in its guts. Cosmic trembling chills and provokes terrible movements in the mountains, death's splendor in the womb of rivers. I hear the sighing of villages and the lamentation of valleys. I see a forest of eyes that never dry, avenues of tears and coats, and in the gusting of leaves and the wind I see grieving, more grieving, yet more grieving, tears, more tears, yet more tears. They won't scatter your bones or drag them away, volcano of sweet grape syrup, thunderclap of honeycombs, a poet woven with sweetness and bitterness. You have felt the warmth of kisses between two long lines of dagger blows, long love, long death, long fire. To keep your death company, all the corners of the sky and the earth fill with flocks of harmony, blue vibrating lightning flashes. Castanets hail down in torrents, battalions of flutes, tambourines and gypsies, rain flurries of bumblebees and violins, guitar and piano storms, incursions of horns and bugles. But silence can do more than all these instruments. Silence, desert-like, dusty in death's desert. It seems that your tongue, that your breath have been closed by the slamming of a door as if your shadow would walk with mine through a land carpeted in silence, which likes the cypress even darker. My throat prowls around your agony like a pitchfork and I taste a funeral drink. You know, Federico Garcia Lorca, I am one of those who enjoy death day after day. So, well, thank you, Jesus. Gracias a Jesus por esta recital tan... Bravo, bravo. Muy diferente, ¿no? La, el sonido de las dos lenguas también. ¿eh? Sí. sí, oye. So, Antonio, you're next. I am next, yes. Enorme tu recitado, Jesus. Me ha encantado. So, I'm sharing an image of... Uh, Gracias. With uh, Federico uh, Garcia Lorca uh, at the center, in uh, with uh, with a black um, uh, jacket. So yeah, it's my turn now. Thank you so much, um, Mike, for um, everything you've done in organizing this uh, event. And um, I'm going to have a few minutes now of time. And this is a slightly slightly uh, autobiographical um, because my connection with Garcia Lorca is very personal and very intimate. That's me and um, when I was 16 being Federico Garcia Lorca during two years in, um, in high school where we had a theater group called La Barraca and we uh, performed um, recitals of Federico Garcia Lorca and in particular, that image is of a, of a conference. Uh, we performed a conference of Federico Garcia Lorca, and I was the, the character Federico Garcia Lorca, as you can see in that image. And uh, I, I also used to sing in a choir where we have a number of pieces by Federico Garcia Lorca that we used to sing. So it's something that I feel very personal and very intimately linked to Federico Garcia Lorca. And then um, it's interesting uh, in relation to the poem that I'm going to explain now briefly, it's called The Moon, um, because this poem came about as a sort of dare. I was with a good friend talking about our pains, you know, pains that afflict, afflicted me. And um, at some point of my friend said, why don't you write a poem about these, about these pains? Uh, and I said, yes, why not? It's a good idea. And I started to write a poem. And as, as the poem started to develop, the poem started in Spanish. I realized that I was bringing about a lot of um, forms and a lot of images, a lot of words, even a little bit of a style from Federico Garcia Lorca. And I, and I suddenly thought that 
you know, uh, even though my poetry has nothing to do with Federico García Lorca, there was a point in which, you know, I felt the need to resort uh, to his imagery to express uh, these emotions. So here is the poem, uh, and I'll read it first in English and then in Spanish. And I originally conceived the poem in English, sorry, in Spanish. The moon has gone mad in the jet black fields of aluminum flowers where she wanders and wanders between Gemini and Virgo. She doesn't have any friends. She can't be rescued from her night. I can't say that I love her. I can't say that I hate her. The breast of the moon tastes of beaten tin. The moon blames the wolves for the bitter howling. She never buys toys for not wasting money. Who cares if I love her? Who cares if I hate her? The sky is a labyrinth with no planets to embrace. We are all moon, moon without gravity to save us. We are all moon, moon erratic in space. Y el poema en español. La luna se ha vuelto loca en los campos de azabache, de flores de aluminio, por los que vaga y vaga entre acuario y sagitario, y no tiene amistades que de su noche la saquen. No puedo decirle que la odio, no puedo decirle que la quiero. Los senos de la luna tienen sabor a estaño. Nunca compra juguetes para no tirar dinero. La luna culpa a los lobos de su aullido amargo. ¿A quién le importa si la odio? ¿A quién le importa si la quiero? El cielo es un laberinto sin planeta al que abrazarse. Todos somos luna, 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 sin gravedad que nos salve. Todos somos luna, luna, luna y erramos por el espacio. Y eso es todo. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you, Antonio. So now, can I invite Mohsen Imadi um, to, Mohsen has, um, is going to, we're going to see a film in three parts by Mohsen. The name of it is Llueve en el Corazón de Locura. And I think Mohsen, you're going to introduce, say something about the film. Yes, thank you, Mike. Maybe, uh, maybe in Spanish and English, because some people don't understand English. Just a few okay. words in Spanish, yeah? I mainly uh, say in, in English and I translate it into Spanish. No? Sure. So I guess that the relation every one of, of us has with uh, great poets, with great poets are mainly intimate relationship, unless they may not be that great poets. You know? uh, my relationship with Lorca started when I was 16 years in Iran and I read the translations of Ahmad Shamru, the great Persian poet of Lorca to Persian. And uh, Lorca's poetry transformed my poetry and transformed myself as well. I had 18 when I in Tehran, I was searching in the forbidden books in underground libraries, uh, a version of the Boda de Sangre or uh, the blood wedding of Lorca, which at the time was forbidden in Iran. And I found uh, it in an underground library and I came uh, I couldn't stop, you know, to and wait to come to my apartment to read it. I started reading it in the street, and suddenly I found myself singing in a Lorca. But I discovered that I'm singing the poems with the melodies of my own grandmother. You know? So it remains in me. Uh, and years later, when I arrived in Mexico in some sort of the parties we had with Juan Gelman, the great Argentinian poet. Uh, you know, uh, late at the night, uh, I was starting singing and I was singing Lorca in, the, uh, uh, in, in those parties together. And it was Juan Gelman who told to another Spanish poet, Antonia Gamoneda, my teacher and my friend, that uh, Mohsen sings Lorca in Persian. And a few times I sing it for Antonio. So Antonio and, uh, and Juan 
were the main people who encouraged me to do something with those melodies. And luckily, the Secretary of the Culture of the State of Mexico helped us with a group of the musicians from the State of Mexico, especially Javier Tagle, uh, a brother to me. And we uh, tried to make a kind of the you know, mixture of the three uh, the cultures. Uh, I can say that the translation I tried to do in these uh, works are very accurate uh, in the sense of melody and in the sense of words. Uh, but to be accurate, I discovered that they have to translate Lorca uh, using uh, uh, another language, which is Mazandarani language, which is uh, a language of the Northern Iran, and it's not Persian. So the respiration uh, system in Spanish has eight syllables. Uh, Persian language has 11 syllables and Mazandari language has 12 syllables and the translation between an eight syllable language to a uh, 12 uh, syllable language is much more easier than to 11 syllable language. And I found out that Lorca is better translatable to the language of Norse than to, to Persian. So it was an intent that I did in translation of Lorca to, uh, to Mazandarani language, which doesn't have any literature because uh, of the emperor, you know, Persian and Arabic emperor uh, prohibited that language from having uh, a writing system and, uh, and also uh, living literature. So it was an intent in that side. And uh, we did several concerts of that in Mexico. And then it happened, uh, the phalangist of Islamic Republic uh, killed 1,500 Iranian in the streets and uh, in the protests in 2018. Uh, and then um, the musical group came to my house that most and let's record it together you know, as a homage to all the lost souls in Iran. So we recorded on my rooftop and uh, again, and this is a reportage, the film is a reportage of that uh, recording uh, mixed with the image of the Spain, it's mixed with the image of Iran and mixed the image of the protest in Iran. So you will see in parts, the bullets and things like that all are related to what happened in Iran in, uh, in the protest of 2018. And um, so uh, nothing more to say, we can see the work. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mohsen. Uh, wow. We will see the first, the, the video. Mm -hmm. um, we have divided it into three parts. Yeah, so we will w watch the first, uh, the first minutes uh, and then we will watch two more extracts of the video at a later point during the event. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much. در کناره های رود شب خود را می در پستان های لولیتا شاخه ها زشق می میرند شاخه ها زشق می میرند شب برهنه آواز می خاند بر پرهای فروردین بلیسا تنش را می شوید با آب لبشور و گلهای مریم شاخه ها زشق می میرند شاخه ها زشق می میرند شب بادیان و نقره بر بام های سفالی می درخشد سواحل جریان ها و آینه ها بادیان ماهیچه های سفیدت شاخه ها زشق می میرند شاخه ها زشق می میرند موسیقی <تصفيق> 
Oh.
در دست کودکی دو تن با هم میرخسند مرگ و یک کودک ماه کارمن است با موهای سپید و چشم ها درخشان پرده ها را باید بست و کودکان بی خیال هنوز میرخسند ماهی ماهش در صحنه است میپرسد کدام یک از این کودکان را باید با خود ببرم کدامشان باید کشته شوند از مادر میپرسد از بچه هایت کدامشان را به من میدهی دخترت را پسرت را زانی به روی آب من همان نازین خاموشم در عبادتگاه ها بر گوشه مهراب در میان شاخ سارانه به هم پیچیده من وهم سهرگاهی دروغینم آن چه کس را هست یا راوی گریز از من چیست آن کوزار میگرید در خار زار تار و وحمنگیز این دره کیست آن کو می کند خود را در نقابی بی خود از دید من پنان من به چشمی شیشه گون هر چیز را پنان به هر جا هست می بینم بشنه من تو نقابی در کمین فرصت مغود شب همه شب در هوای تیره میگردد پی مقصود تا به زخمی خون چکام و سرخ پی کری را بردرد چون رود باز کنید باز کنید جانم از سرمای سخت افسر زیرا من میکشم تن بر سر دیوار بر آینه بر آهن سینه گرم انسان را به روی من مکشایید سینه گرم و خونالود سینه خون چکان و سرخ را تا من در درونش گود برگردم Wonderful. Good girl. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. It's just, I have to just mention that it's the, an elegy starting from the birth of a baby, you know, and the assassination of the baby uh, in the end. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank bueno, you. invito a, a Jose Niesta que va a recitar un, una solea suyas, suyas, suyas. And the translation by Bridge, Bridge Webster. Adelante. José. Vale, ¿se me oye ya? Sí. Sí. Vale. Bueno, pues yo, impresionante lo del Bosenemandi, esa conexión con el, con el baile flamenco y... y esa conexión del hombre, ¿no? sobre todo del hombre pobre y del niño con, con la vida y con el baile y con el cante que va todo junto. ¿no? Yo en este que os voy a leer pues es eh, 
son unas oleas flamencas que, que yo he cogido para esa estructura para, para escribir. A mí desde muy joven ha sido una pasión absoluta el flamenco por, por la conexión que tiene inmediata con la vida de la gente pobre, con el baile, con la danza, con el grito. ¿no? En el flamenco yo he encontrado desde la alegría más extrema hasta el grito más profundo, el clamor, el, la captación del misterio y todo eso nos lo da lo popular. Eh, Lorca y muchos otros supieron aprovechar esa tradición y ese grito del pueblo y, y elevarlo, igual que hizo Falla o que hizo Albéniz en una música. ¿no? Y yo he cogido esta forma tan breve, casi, casi como un grito, para, para intentar expresar con, con una forma mínima, eh, pues un poco pretensión de, de, de decir lo máximo, ¿no? La estructura que tiene la solea son, son tres versos de ocho sílabas únicamente. Cada una de las soleas que os leeré son absolutamente independientes unas de otras. Y con esos tres versos de ocho sílabas, que, que tres o cuatro que, que riman en un par de ellos, pues es lo que os voy a, lo que os voy a ofrecer. Eh, conforman, estas soleas me las publicaron en una revista, pero conforman ya un libro que tengo acabado que se titulará Aunque muera de sed. ¿Qué pena más grande tengo? Estaba mirando el río y aumentaron mis desiertos. Supongo que no sé nada. Pequeñas cosas acaso sin demasiada importancia. Y mira, que mira y mira, que cuando cierro los ojos se me desvelan mis vidas. ¿Con qué sentido la parra derrama su fresca sombra sobre mis vidas cansadas? ¿Desde cuándo el loco viento me susurra entre las cañas las canciones de mis muertos? Descalcito, soy del tiempo, voy pisando las baldosas de mi casa y es invierno. Ay, mis palmeras salvajes, creciendo en la sin razón de la sed y sus desastres. Por no saber dónde ir y no saber hasta cuándo, yo me senté en una piedra arrimada a un muro blanco. En la luz de mis mañanas, donde todo está pasando, jamás me sucede nada. ¿Y quién me lo iba a decir que después de tantos pasos me alejaría de mí? Era el alba y atardece, ayer mi rosa se abrió y ya no me pertenece. Entre el antes y el después va dando tumbos el sueño de mi ahora, nada sé. Acógeme Noche en calma, que aquí mi madre no está y sus caricias me faltan. Qué poca importancia tengo. Estoy mirando en los bosques maneras de ser del viento.
desde siempre, qué aventura. La tierra me ha regalado en estos campos resecos la rosa eterna del cardo. Donde el viento en las palmeras se me van los pensamientos, la sed, los años, las penas. Qué lindo. Bridge, where's Bridge? Bravo, yeah. bravo. Bueno, es, la soleá tiene ese punto de, del grito, ¿no? De, de, de la emoción inmediata y, y, y cómo, cómo el flamenco eso no, nos lo ha dado y la tradición popular nos lo ha dado en el cante, ¿no? El, el ser capaces de, con tres versos, para el que lo escuche, lo canta, hacer llorar a otro, ¿no? Hacer que, que se emocione tanto, ¿no? Y intenté rescatar con estas soleas, pues un poco escribiendo mi poesía, que no la dejo de escribir, pues darle esa, esa, esa esencialidad y esa densidad y, y ese grito que tiene el flamenco. ¿no? Antonio, Entonces, could you maybe translate just very briefly a few of the remarks that um, José made just now? That José continues to do his poetry, but the soleá is a very special uh, type of strophe that communicates that cry, that, um, that fundamental um, saying um, that is so emotional and so pure. Please. How great my sadness is. I was gazing at the river and my deserts multiplied. I suppose I know nothing, maybe small things, things of little importance. And look, look, just look, how when I close my eyes, my lives are revealed to me. How the vine's consciousness pours its cool shadow over my tired lives. Since when has the crazy wind been whispering to me the songs of my dead through the reeds? Barefoot, a child of time. I am treading the tiles in my house and it's winter. Oh, my wild palm trees growing in the unreason of thirst and its disasters. Not knowing where to go and not knowing till when I sat on a stone hunched against a white wall in the light of my mornings where everything is going on nothing ever happens to me And who was going to tell me that after so many steps, I would step away from myself? It was dawn and now evening. Yesterday, my rose opened and doesn't belong to me anymore. in between, before and after, I stumble on through the dream of my now. I know nothing. Gather me in night's calm, for my mother is not here and I am missing her caresses. 
Oh, how little importance am I? I am searching the woods for ways of being the wind. What an adventure has the earth always gifted me in these parched fields, the thistle, eternal rose. Where the wind is in the palm trees, go my thoughts, thirst, the years, sorrows. Wonderful reading. Beautiful, beautiful poems, beautiful reading. Beautiful Amazing. poem. Thank you. So beautiful, beautiful reading. Incredible. So now we have um, a poem from Marielle, who's not with us, but maybe Antonio, you could read it, and then Susan is going to read the English. Marielle Zuki from Argentina. The wonderful poem. Yes friend of ours, but she can't actually be here with us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, y muchas gracias, Mariel, por enviarnos este poema. Uh, Mike, we had said that we would show this image of uh, Federico yeah. Garcia Lorca with a butterfly in his bow tie, um, which is the, the image that Mariel suggested um, to begin with. And here is the poem. A Federico García Lorca. Su corazón no era ciertamente alegre. Se desbocaba su pluma en palabras que como música sonaban. Lo deslumbraba el cielo, los temblores de la luz y la tristeza nueva sobre las cosas regocijadas. Su corazón no era ciertamente alegre. Lo deslumbraba la luna casi plateada las alamedas marchitas y la luz del invierno azulada. Le dolió tanto el amor y el sueño de las distancias. Cálidos pétalos deshojaría sobre sus manos, fieles creadoras de tus palabras. Las nubes de tus poemas ensombrecen el alma de los tiranos. Tu corazón no está vacío. Fluye tu sangre en inmortal plegaria. To Federico Garcia Loca. His heart was certainly not a joyful one. His pen rushed headlong into words which had the sound of music. The sky dazzled him, the light trembling and new sadnesses caused by happy things. His heart was certainly not a joyful one. The silvered moon dazzled him as did the withered poplar groves and the azure of the wintry night light. Love and the dream of distances hurt him so deeply. It would scatter warm petals over your hands faithful creators of your words. Your poems are clouds casting shadows on the souls of tyrants. Your heart is not empty. Your blood flows in a deathless prayer. Thank you. Lovely, Susan, thank you. Thank you. So, now we are continuing the, the elegy, La elegía, la película de Mohsen. Seguimos con la segunda parte. Muy bien. So, we are going to connect with uh, Mohsen's video. Here we are. Chandedirotino, 
راه خون رفت اما خونی رو که ریخت خاک میمکه چی میگی؟ آدم تو اون قطره آخر خونش رو بده و بمیره بهتر از اونه که زنده بمونه و خونش بگنده ساکت چیه؟ چیزی میشنوی؟ صدای و از اقا و زنجره ها رو میشنوم صدای شب رو میشنوم که کمین کرده صدای پای عصب نمیاد نه
بد آب سیاه و تار زیر سنگ و خار رو پال دراز میخونه آواز کی میدونه اون با کی میگه راز وقتی زیر پر آب نقمه ساز میکشه دامن با هزار گیرشون آوردن نه اما همه جا پیشون میگردن گیرشون میارن ایس چیه آدم خیال میکنه صدا پاشون از همه جا میشنفه ما که در بیاد میبیننشون عقش کاری به کارشون نداشته باشن دنیا بزرگه همه میتونن توش زندگی اما اینا را اتمن می کشن Thank you so much. Um, Manuel is about to join us. I wonder if we should just have a three minute break for, for comfort break for people if they need to, you know, just stretch their legs. We'll have a yes. three minute break and then hopefully yes. Max be with us. We can, we can do that. Uh, so it's eight minutes 17 in the UK. We'll join back at eight minutes uh, 20, 21 uh, while Manuel connect with us. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay.
Hello. Hi. Is Manuel back? Still waiting for Manuel. He, he's got some kind of work translation deadline. I think this is the problem, but I don't quite understand why he hasn't come on. He said he's coming. Okay. Um, would you like to uh, perhaps uh, move to the following number? Or... We could do that. These yeah. are. Yeah, that might be a good idea. That will also give him an opportunity to. Uh, you, so, can you look out for him, Antonio? Yeah, hang on a second. So, hello, everybody, and welcome back. Um, we have a little bit of an unforeseen situation, but we're going to fix it all in a second. Uh, we are going to move uh, to our next uh, our next part. Uh, actually, the next part is you, Mike. That's me. Oh, so we we are going to continue with uh, our friend, colleague, uh, Mike Benham, who is going to... Um, you have here this fantastic painting. What is this? This, this is, is me, age 20, basically. And you can imagine, I don't know what I was reading, but I could well have been reading Lorca because Mohsen said he discovered Lorca when he was 16. Well, I more or less did at 16, but I really got into him at the in my 20s. And I was absolutely, I was in love with his poetry and with his personality. Um, and the first poems I translated were from Poema in Nueva York. And then the second ones from Divan del Tamarit. And Ivan El Tamarit is very interesting. It was the last book. It was in press at the University of Granada in 1936, due to be published. And it was pulled because of the civil war, his death, it was pulled. So it didn't appear until I think 1941 in, in Argentina. They screened down. Um, Quiero bajar casida del herido por el agua. Quiero bajar al pozo. Quiero subir los muros de Granada para mirar el corazón pasado por el punzón oscuro de las aguas. El niño herido gemía con una corona de escarcha. Estanques, aljibes y fuentes levantaban al aire sus espadas. ¡Ay, qué furia de amor! Que hiriente filo, que nocturno rumor, que muerte blanca, que desiertos de luz iban hundiendo los arenales de la madrugada. El niño estaba solo, con la ciudad dormida en la garganta. Un surtidor que viene de los sueños, lo defiende del hambre de las algas. El niño y su agonía frente a frente, Eran dos verdes lluvias enlazadas. El niño se tendía por la tierra y su agonía se curvaba. Quiero bajar al pozo. Quiero morir mi muerte abojanadas. Quiero llenar mi corazón de musco para ver al herido por el agua. Casida of the boy wounded by water. I want to go down to the well. I want to go up to the walls of Granada to see that heart pierced by the dark blade of the waters. The wounded boy groaned with his crown of frost. Ponds, cisterns, fountains raised their swords in the air. What fury of love, what wounding blade, what night murmuring, what white death. What deserts of light were overwhelming the sands of morning. The boy was alone with the city asleep in his throat. A fountain which comes from dreams, shields him from the hunger of seaweed. The boy and his agony, forehead to forehead, were two green raindrops entwined. The boy stretched out on the ground and his agony curved. I want to go down to the well. I want to die my death in mouthfuls. I want to fill my heart with moss to see the boy wounded by water. Gacela de la muerte oscura. Quiero dormir el sueño de las manzanas, alejarme del tumulto de los cementerios. 
Quiero dormir el sueño de aquel niño que quería cortarse el corazón en alta mar. No quiero que me repitan que los muertos no pierden la sangre, que la boca podrida sigue pidiendo agua. No quiero enterarme de los martirios que da la hierba, ni de la luna con boca de serpiente que trabaja antes del amanecer. Quiero dormir un rato, un rato, un minuto, un siglo, pero que todos sepan que no he muerto, que hay un establo de oro en mis labios, que soy el pequeño amigo del viento oeste, que soy la sombra inmensa de mis lágrimas. Cúbreme por la aurora con un velo, porque me arrojará puñados de hormigas y moja con agua dura mis zapatos para que respale la pinza de su alacrán. Porque quiero dormir el sueño de las mantanas para aprender un llanto que me limpie de tierra. Porque quiero vivir con aquel niño oscuro que quería cortarse el corazón en alta mar. The Sailor of the Dark Death. I want to sleep the sleep of apples to flee from the tumult of cemeteries. I want to sleep the sleep of that boy who wanted to cut his heart out on the high seas. I don't want to be told again that the dead do not lose blood, that the rotting mouth goes on asking for water. I don't want to know about the martyrdoms that grass inflicts nor of the serpent mouth moon that works before dawn. I want to sleep for a while, a while, a minute, a century, but everybody must know that I'm not dead, that there is a stable of gold in my lips, that I am the little friend of the west wind, that I am the vast shadow of my tears. Cover me at dawn with a veil, for she will throw handfuls of ants at me and damp my shoes with hard water so that her scorpion claw may slip. Because I want to sleep the sleep of apples, to learn a lament that will clean me of earth. Because I want to live with that dark boy who wanted to cut his heart out on the high seas. So this is one of my favorite poems from the Poeta en Nueva York. Lorca went to New York. He traveled to New York and Cuba and I think Mexico. And he had a real kind of crisis, I think, in New York, and the poems are very anguished. So, Poema Doble del Lago de Eden, the quote from Garcilaso, Nuestro ganado pace, el viento espira, Garcilaso. Era mi voz antigua, ignorante de los densos jugos amargos, la adivino lamiendo mis pies bajo los frágiles helechos mojados. Ay, Voz antigua de mi amor, hay voz de mi verdad, hay voz de mi abierto costado, cuando todas las rosas manaban de mi lengua y el césped no conocía la impasible dentadura del caballo. Estás aquí bebiendo mi sangre, bebiendo mi humor de niño pesado, mientras se quiebran en el viento con el aluminio y las voces de los borrachos. Déjame pasar la puerta donde Eva come hormigas y Adán fecunda pe peces deslumbrados. Déjame pasar, hombrecillo de los cuernos, al bosque de los desperezos y los alegrísimos saltos. Yo sé el uso más secreto que tiene un viejo alfiler oxidado y sé del horror de unos ojos despiertos sobre la superficie concreta del plato. Pero no quiero mundo ni sueño, voz divina. Quiero mi libertad, mi amor humano. En el rincón más oscuro de la brisa que nadie quiera, mi amor humano. Esos perros marinos se persiguen y el viento acecha troncos descuidados. Oh, voz antigua, quema con tu lengua esta voz de hojalata y de talco. Quiero llorar porque me da la gana, como lloran los niños del último banco, porque yo no soy un hombre, ni un poeta, ni una hoja, pero sí 
un pulso herido que sonda las cosas del otro lado. Quiero llorar diciendo mi nombre, Rosa, Niño y Abeto, a la orilla de este lago, para decir mi verdad de hombre de sangre, matando en mí la burla y la sugestión del vocablo. No, no, yo no pregunto, yo deseo mi voz, voz mía libertada, que me lames las manos. En el laberinto de biombos es mi desnudo el que recibe la luna de castigo y el reloj encenizado. Así hablaba yo, así hablaba yo cuando Saturno detuvo los trenes y la bruma y el sueño y la muerte me estaban buscando, me estaban buscando. Allí donde mugen las vacas que tienen patitas de paje y allí donde flota mi cuerpo entre los equilibrios contrarios. Double poem of Lake Eden. Our flock grazes, the wind breathes out, Agathilasso. My old voice knew nothing of the dense bitter juices. I sensed it licking my feet under the delicate drenched ferns. Old voice of my love, voice of my truth, voice of my pierced side when all roses flowed from my tongue and the grass had not yet felt the impassive teeth of the horse. You are drinking up my blood here, drinking up my tiresome child's humour, while my eyes break in the wind on aluminium and drunken voices. Let me through the gate where Eve eats ants and Adam spawns with dazzled fish. Let me through horned dwarf to the wood of slow awakenings and joyful leaps. I know the most secret use of an old rusty needle. I know the horror of eyes open on the level surface of a plate. But, divine voice, I don't want the world or sleep. I want my liberty, my human love. In the darkest corner of the wind that no one cares for, my human love. Those seals chasing each other and the wind waylaying careless tree trunks. Old voice, burn with your tongue this voice of tin and talcum. I want to cry because I feel like it, like children cry in the back row of the class because I am not a man or a poet or a leaf, but I am a wounded pulse probing into beyond. I want to cry saying my name, rose, child, pine tree on the banks of this lake, to speak my truth as a man of blood killing in me the mockery and suggestiveness of words. No, no, I do not ask. I crave my free voice. You are licking my hands. In the labyrinths of screens, it is my body which bears the moon of torment and the cinder clock. I spoke thus. I spoke thus when Saturn halted the trains, when fog and sleep and death were searching for me, searching for me, there where the cows with hooves of straw were lowing, there where my body floats, balanced between the opposites. Thank you. Thank you. Man. Bravo. Thank you. I think I have a feeling that what we should do, Antonio, I think we should move to the next part of the final part of Mohsen's film and I'll try and sort out what's happening with Manuel. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we are going to move to the next part, the last part of the video uh, with Mohsen and uh, let me see. So Mohsen, uh, we are about to yes. go again with your video. Would you like to say something while I find the track? Oh, thank you very much. I just wanted to show this version of the Romancero Gitano the, of, the, of Garcia Lorca. It was published in 1946 in Toulouse by Solidaridad Española. And in the beginning of the book appears a note that I translated into English that uh, that actually is very valid still in, in our world. It says that by editing Romancero Gitano, Solidaridad Española, uh, uh, gives an homage to our great national poet, Federico Garcia Lorca, in his 10th anniversary of his death. 
uh, in the hand of the civil guards, uh, uh, the, the people who uh, one day he said, uh, <clears throat> they have their skulls uh, of, uh, of, of plum, plomo, uh, of copper, and because of that, they don't cry. So, uh, and I guess that uh, every those who tienen uh, de plomo los calaveras siguen vivo en, nuestras, en, en nuestro universo y pues hay que seguir resistiendo con la poesía y la vida. Muy bien, muchísimas gracias. Vaya una imagen esa de la plomo en las calaveras, ¿no? Sí. Uh, the, copper, the copper in the schools or the plum uh, yeah. in the schools. Muy bien, vamos adelante con el video. کویر از زیتون زاران و نارنجستان ها می گذرند رود بارهای دوگان یک قرنات از برف به گردم فروت می آید دریغا عشق که شد و باز نیاد پهنا به گوادل کویر ریشی لرگونه دارد رود باران قرنات یکی می گرید یکی خون می فشاند دریغا عشق که برباد شد از برای زورف های بادبانی سویل را مقبری هست بر آب غرنات اما تنها آه هست که پارو می کشد در ایغایش که شد و باز نیامد گوادل کویر برج بلند و باد در نارنجستان ها خمیل و دار و برج های کوچک و مردگانی بر پهنه آب گیر ها در عشق که برباد شد که خواهد گفت که آب میبرد تالا تشی از فریاد ها را در عشق که شد و باز نیامد بهار نارنج را و زیتون را اندلس به دریاهایت ببر در عشق که برباد شد
Beautiful, Martin. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Muy bien. Muchísimas gracias, Mosen. Mike. Eh, yeah. Mike, ¿no? Seguimos esperando a Manuel. No sé lo que pasa, pero. <laughs> bueno. Está, supongo que estás llegando, pero seguimos con el programa, me parece. Sí, sí, sí. Por supuesto. Bueno. Sí. Eh, Sí, bueno, eh, una cosa, hay gente que está comentando sobre el fondo. El fondo es de una pintora iraní eh, que se llama Sakiba, que vive aquí en Inglaterra. My background is of an Iranian painter who lives in, in English called Sakiba. You can find her in Sakiba uh, Yorkshire Art. And I think we got uh, Manuel Neto. We do. Fantastic. So we're going to go back to the... Um, the program. The program. Yes, um, pass the slides back. Welcome, Manuel. Okay. Where are you? Camera on? Hi, wonderful. Hello, greetings from Algarve, Portugal. Oh, wonderful. So, how are you? You just arrived on time. This is your turn. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, we've got on the screen, we have your poems. Thank you. Can you tell me, Manuel, do you want to read alternately with the English or do you want to read all the Portuguese and then we do all the English? I would rather prefer just to have it straightforward and then read it uh, totally. And then uh, later on, of course, it um, makes more sense. Otherwise, we're just uh, swapping. Okay, but so I'm just, first, first of all, I would like to say thank you very much for the invitation. Sorry, it was a misunderstanding from my part because I should have linked to you a couple of... Uh, sometimes I've been with you since the beginning, and it is an amazing, an amazing event. I can say thank you for all the effort. You are top, top... Um, the, the way of organizing, bringing so many different voices, it's amazing. And may I just briefly, please, to let you know, my link and my connection with Lorca happened when I was just a little boy. I was seven years old, and I went on stage uh, because apart from a poet, I'm an actor as well. And I saw the Casa de Bernarda Alba with all these women dressed in black and the intensity of these actresses. They just was, I was just uh, amazed. I was, uh, what's going on? Who can write um, a, a piece of theater with this dimension? Who is this poet? And it was Lorca. Many more ye many years later, I had the joy of going and read poetry and invited and went to Granada. And I've been walking through these narrow streets and I just entered by accident in a small cafe. And there was just, you know, hundreds of photos of Lorca on the walls. And in that day, I took notes and I wrote the poem in my soul later on on paper, which I'm going to read it for you tonight with a big, big hug. And what an amazing idea of making Lorca more universal than he is already and he always will be. Thank you for your invitation. So Antonio, if you scroll down with, with as Manuel reads and then we can go back for answers. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Thank you so much for your kind invitation. You're welcome. Portico. Portico. Arco de ferradura para garrafa. No charco dos dias, os meus poemas são pedradas certeiras, gritos rasgados, vincos das entranhas, dos sonhos e do silêncio. Caudas aldelinhas perturbando a vítrea, superfície da água estagnada. Regresso a Granada, olhos brilhantes de alegria, como um filho há muito ausente que revisitasse a sua velha casa. Flui pelo meu sangue solino, arábiga andaluz, a dolência da tua memória, como placidamente desliza o rio Janil, contando segredos de darco e de beiro. 
available da tua essência, ombro a ombro, e de ambulo por vir e alas e as inhagas, irmanado da cinta lablique. Também em nossos corações, aproveitam os reinos muçulmanos, Zarid e Nasherida, pela fraternidade universal, vertida nos cânticos humildes da agora ribeira aos pés do Alhambra. Na dormência dos dias, por aqui, relembro Aldaicim como a alfama da minha pátria lisbuna e do meu coração esverdeia de contente o meu irmão de alma, Garcia Lorca, verde, que te quero verde, no verdor do recorte das folhas do acanto. Prisioneiro do teu fascínio, Gardarca, subo a escarpada escadaria no fascínio da água jorrando da base da muralha. Na solência destes dias, ergue-se a poesia como esporão na colina de Saquipa. E os meus versos ganham altivez das torres barbejas, nesta argamassa de sangue, de esperança e de tristeza. Passamos pela vida como, antes de nós, outros passaram pela rua dos tristes, porta dos penitentes. Ser poeta é ser cântara, rael chenil, com as formas da ponta pequena, Nome da aldeia do Algarve, onde nasci. Nos charcos dos dias, nos meus poemas, o ritmo das palavras relembra-me a serra de Alfaguara. O cerro do sol da minha alma vai adormecer após a oração da tarde para despertar com o astro rei esbanjando oiro pela madrugada a refugir na horta da Casa Branca. O dia é inseto. Com brancas são as pedras que atiram o charco dos meus dias para que a reverberação da luz aconteça na minha alma de poeta. E é tudo. Muitíssimas graças. Muito obrigado. Um prazer. Graças. Bueno, Vamos mostrar agora a inglês a tradução Anne will read. And Anne and Lord will read. Whenever you are ready, Anne. You're muted, Anne. I forgot. Don't worry. <laughs> Welcome back to the sound. In the pool of the days, my poems are stones well aimed, cries snatched from the entrails of dreams and silence, dragonfly tails ruffling the glassy surface of the stagnant water. I come back to Granada, my eyes shining with happiness, like a long absent son who returns to his old, old house. In my blood, Andalusian Arab Southern flows placidly the river Genil, telling secrets of Darko and Byro. I approach your essence shoulder to shoulder and wander through alleyways and little squares, a brother to Sinta Leplik, in our hearts as well the kingdoms of the Zarid and the Nazarid live on through universal brotherhood poured out in the humble songs of this moment at the foot of the Alhambra. In the torpor of the days around here, I remember our bison like the old farmer in the Lisbon of my homeland. And my heart greens with contentment. My soul, brother Garcia Lorca, green, how I love you, green, in the green of the acanthus leaves. Your fascinated prisoner, Granada. I climb the sloping stairs, wondering at the water gushing from the base of the walls. In these sleepy days, poetry rears, rears up like a spur on the hill of Sabika, and my verses scale the heights of the Bijamas Towers in the mortar of blood, hope, and sadness. We pass through life 
just as, before us, others would have passed along the street of sadness, the gate of penitence. To be a poet is to be Cantara el Zeno, like the shapes of the little bridge, the name of that village in the Algarve where I was born. In the pools of the days, through my poems, the rhythms of words reminds me of the Sierra de Alpaguera, that sunlit hill where my soul goes to sleep after the evening prayer, only to wake like the star king scattering gold at dawn, resplendent in the garden of the White House in the day beginning. How white are the stones that I throw into the pool of my days so that the reverberation of light might occur in my poet's heart. Thank you, Anne, and thank you, Manuel. Amazing. Thank you so much to all of you. Thank you very much. An honor, an honor. Thank you. Where are so we now, Antonio? We are um, in after Lorca. So I'm going to share with you a picture that we took today in my dining table, dining room table. Would you please explain to us um, something interesting about this, this volume? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to explain it in Sp English and in Spanish, okay? Yeah. Jack Spicer, he wrote this little book after Lorca. It was published in 1974 and it contains letters to Lorca's ghost. He has an imaginary letter sort of correspondence with Lorca. He does free translations from the Divan del Tamaret and Poet in New York. And he writes his, his own poems, which are influenced by Lorca, which we're going to hear two of. After Lorca has an interesting ambiguity, the after. It can mean following in the steps of, but also the time after. So we are all after Lorca in this sense. Lorca, the poet, in his restless and brilliant development, reminds me very much of Picasso, who throughout his life continually transformed and reinvented himself while remaining distinctively himself. I'm convinced that if Lorca hadn't been kind of stolen from us by the, these criminals who murdered him, if he had had another 50 years to live and work, he would have continued to transform himself in ways we can't imagine. Yeah, you can see the way his work transforms itself from the beginning to the work he was doing just before he died. Bueno, Jack Spice escribió un pequeño libro after Lorca, publicado en 1974. Contiene cartas al poeta, al fantasma de Lorca, tran traducciones del diván del Tamaret y poeta en Nueva York, y sus propios poemas influenciados por Lorca. After, en Lorca, after Lorca tiene una ambigüedad interesante en inglés. After puede decir seguir en los pasos de alguien. También puede decir después de. Somos todos después de Lorca. Su desarrollo artístico tan brillante me hace pensar en Picasso, que se transformaba artísticamente en direcciones inesperadas durante su larga vida. Estoy convencido de que si Lorca hubiera tenido otro más 50 años, que debería de vida y trabajo, y que a él y a nosotros robaron sus verdugos, estaríamos celebrando hoy um, similar, similares transformaciones in, inesperadas. Ok, so after Lorca... Um, We've got two, two letters, which Kevin is gonna, uh, gonna read in two poems. So, to you, Kevin. Yeah, thank and you. Uh, Ariel, the translations into Spanish. Exactly, yeah. Real Miller, which is wonderful. So we're, we're translating back into Lorca's language. Dear Lorca, when I translate one of your poems, and I come across words I do not understand, I always guess at their meanings. I am inevitably right. A really perfect poem 
no one has yet written one, could be perfectly translated by a person who did not know one word of the language it was written in. A really perfect poem has an infinitely small vocabulary. It is very difficult. We want to transfer the immediate object, the immediate emotion to the poem, and yet the immediate always has hundreds of its own words clinging to it, short-lived and tenacious as barnacles. And it is wrong to scrape them off and substitute others. A poet is a time mechanic, not an embalmer. The words around the immediate shrivel and decay like flesh around the body. No mummy sheet of tradition could be used to stop the process. Objects, words must be led across time, not preserved against it. I yell shit down a cliff at the ocean. Even in my lifetime, the immediacy of that word will fade. It will be as dead as alas. But if I put the real cliff and the real ocean into the poem, the word shit will ride along with them, travel the time machine until cliffs and oceans disappear. Most of my friends like words too well. They set them under the blinding light of the poem and try to extract every possible connotation from each of them. Every temporary pun, every direct or indirect, indirect connection. As if a word could become an object by mere addition of consequences. Others pick up words from the streets, from their bars, from their offices, and display them proudly in their poems as if they were shouting, See what I have collected from the American language. Look at my butterflies, my stamps, my old shoes. What does one do with all this crap? Words are what sticks to the real. We use them to push the real, to drag the real into the poem. They are what we hold on with, nothing else. They are as valuable in themselves as rope with nothing to be tied to. I repeat, the perfect poem has an infinitely small vocabulary. Love, Jack. Lovely. And the second letter I'll read. And I think first, no, uh, this is going to Ariel now. Oh, right. So it's poem, lesser, two poems, and another lesser. Great. Segunda carta a Federico García Lorca. Querido Lorca, cada vez que traduzco uno de tus poemas y me topo con palabras que no entiendo, adivino su significado. De manera inevitable tengo razón. Un poema realmente perfecto, nadie ha escrito uno, podría ser perfectamente traducido por una persona que no supiera ni una palabra de la lengua en la cual hubiera sido escrito. Un poema realmente perfecto tiene un vocabulario infinitamente pequeño. Es muy difícil. Queremos transferir el objeto inmediato, la inmediata emoción al poema, y no obstante, lo inmediato siempre tiene cientos de palabras propias que se le hacen efímeras y tenaces como Percebes, y está mal raerlas y sustituirlas por otras. Un poeta es un mecánico del tiempo, no un embalsamador. Las palabras que circundan lo inmediato se marchitan y mueren alrededor del cuerpo. La tradición no tiene vendas de momia suficientes que puedan ser utilizadas para frenar el proceso. Los objetos, las palabras, han de ser guiadas a través del tiempo. 
no preservadas en su contra. Le grito, verga al océano acantilado abajo. Incluso en el transcurso de mi vida se desvanecerá la inmediatez de esa palabra. Estará tan muerta como, ay Dios, pero si pongo el acantilado real y el océano real en el interior del poema, la palabra verga navegará junto con ellos, viajará la máquina del tiempo hasta que los acantilados y los océanos desaparezcan. A la mayoría de mis amigos les gustan demasiado las palabras. Las ponen bajo el reflector del poema e intentan extraer toda connotación posible de cada una de ellas. Todo albur temporal, toda conexión directa o indirecta, como si una palabra pudiera volverse un objeto mediante una mera añadidura de consecuencias. Otros levantan palabras de la calle, de sus bares, de sus oficinas y las exponen orgullosamente en sus poemas, como si gritaran, vean lo que logré reunir de la lengua americana, vean mis mariposas, vean mis estampillas, vean mis viejos zapatos, ¿qué hace uno con toda esta mierda? Las palabras son lo que los palos a lo real, las usamos para empujar lo real, para arrastrar lo valioso, lo, eh, lo real hacia el poema, son aquello de lo que nos agarramos, nada más. Por sí solas, son tan valiosas como una cuerda que no tiene nada que ser atada. Repito, el poema perfecto tiene un vocabulario infinitamente pequeño. Con amor, Jack. Lovely. So the first poem is called Aquatic Park, a translation for Jack Spicer. A green boat, fishing in blue water. The gulls circle the pier, calling their hunger. A wind rises from the west like the passing of desire. Two boys playing on the beach, laughing. Their gangling legs cast shadows on the wet sand. Then, Sprawling in the boat, a beautiful black fish. Right. Parque acuático, una retraducción para Jack Spicer. Un barco verde pescando en agua azul. Las gaviotas rodean el muelle en vuelo, convocando su hambre. Un viento se alza del este con el, como el paso del deseo. Dos niños juegan en la playa, riendo. Sus larguiruchas piernas proyectan sombra sobre la arena que ha mojado el mar. Entonces, revoloteando en el barco, un hermoso pez negro. Forest. A translation for Joe Dunn. You want me to tell you the secret of springtime. And I relate to that secret like a high branching fir tree whose thousand little fingers point a thousand little roads. I will tell you never, my love, because the ro river runs slowly. But I shall put into my branching voice the ashy sky of your gaze. Turn me around, brown child. Be careful of my needles. Turn me around and around, playing at the well pump of love. The secret of springtime. How I wish I could tell you. Bosque, una retraducción para Joe Dunn. ¿Quieres que te diga el secreto de la primavera? Y soy uno con aquel secreto como un abeto echando altas ramas, cuyos miles de pequeños dedos apuntan a miles de pequeñas calles. Te diré nunca, mi amor, porque el río corre lento, pero pondré el cielo cenizo en tus ojos, en mi voz que echa altas ramas. Volteame, niño prieto, cuídate de mis agujas. Volteame una y otra vez jugando en la bomba del pozo del amor. El secreto de la primavera Como me gustaría decirte. Beautiful.
and a letter. Dear Lorca, this is the last letter. The connection between us, which has been fading away with the summer, is now finally broken. I turn in anger and dissatisfaction to the things of my life, and you return, a disembodied but contagious spirit to the printed page. It is over, this intimate communion with the ghost of Garcia Lorca. And I wonder now how it was ever able to happen. It was a game, I shout to myself, a game. There are no angels, ghosts, or even shadows. It was a game made out of summer and freedom and a need for poetry that would be more than the expression of my hatreds and desires. It was a game like Yeats' Spooks or Blake's Sexless Seraphim. Sexless seraphim. Yes, it was there. The poems are there. The memory, not of a vision, but a kind of casual friendship with an undramatic ghost who occasionally looked through my eyes and whispered to me, not really more important then than my other friends, but now achieving a different level of reality by being missing. Today, alone, by myself, it is like having lost a pair of eyes and a lover. What is real, I suppose, will endure. Poe's mechanical chess player was not the less a miracle for having a man inside it. And when the man departed, the games it had played were no less beautiful. The analogy is false, of course, but it holds both a promise and a warning for each of us. It is October now. Summer is over. Almost every trace of the months that produced these poems has been obliterated. Only explanations are possible, only regrets. Saying goodbye to a ghost is more final than saying goodbye to a lover. Even the dead return, but a ghost once loved, departing will never reappear. Love, Jack. Querido Lork. Esta es la última carta, nuestro vínculo, el cual se ha ido desvaneciendo con el paso del verano, finalmente se ha roto. Con enojo e insatisfacción me volteo hacia las cosas de mi vida, y tú regresas, incorpóreo más contagioso espíritu a la hoja impresa. Ha llegado a su fin, esta íntima comunión con el fantasma de García Lorca, y me pregunto ahora cómo es que pudo alguna vez haber sucedido. Era un juego. Me grito a mí mismo, un juego. No hay ángeles, fantasmas, ni siquiera sombras. Un juego. Era un juego hecho de verano y libertad y necesidad por una poesía que fuera más que la expresión de mis odios y deseos. Era un juego como los espectros de Yates o los serafines asexuados de Blake. Y sin embargo, allí estaba. Los poemas están ahí, la memoria no de una visión, sino de un tipo de amistad casual, con un fantasma poco dramático que ocasionalmente se asomaba en mis ojos y me susurraba, en realidad no más importante entonces que mis otros amigos, pero que ahora alcanza un nivel de realidad totalmente distinto al estar ausente. Hoy, solo conmigo mismo, es como si hubiera perdido un par de ojos, como si hubiera perdido un amante. Lo que sí es real, supongo, perdurará. El jugador de ajedrez mecánico de Poe no era menos un milagro por tener un hombre en su interior. Y al partir, el hombre no, era menos, no eran menos hermosas las partidas que había jugado. 
La analogía es claramente falsa, pero alberga tanto una promesa como una advertencia para cada uno de nosotros. Ya es octubre. El verano llegó a su fin. Se han desintegrado casi todos los rastros de los meses que produjeron estos poemas. Nada es posible más allá de explicaciones, nada más allá de arrepentimientos. Decirle adiós a un fantasma es más final que decirle adiós a un amante. Incluso los muertos regresan, pero los fantasmas, una vez amados, parten para nunca más reaparecer. Amor, Jack. Wonderful. Lovely, thank you so much. So, um, Mike. Wow. So now, as I said, we're we're all after Lorca, and I'm going to invite Robin now to tell us about Nanas Infantiles and and to play some of his videos. A video of Maria Mar Salgado. We have Maria Salgado's video, and then Robin. Yeah. Video. So Robin. Yes, um, Tony, do you have the text of Maria Salgado? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, well, what inspired this uh, association? Unfortunately, what we couldn't do was um, produce on the program um, the video with Lorca playing the piano and the singer, La Arquintinita, singing the, um, this particular uh, lullaby, Nana de Sevilla. Um, but uh, it's attributed to Lorca that he wrote it. Um, and uh, well, uh, Nana's lullabies, that's very much in the time of Lorca when he was in what's called the dark song period before he went to America, which was folklore and ballads. And lullabies were something that the mothers, of course, was very local and his association with it more than a the poetic theme. Uh, mothers sort of singing to their babies and uh, the local campesinos and peoples that we knew. Um, and uh, then we get. Uh, Maria Salgado, coming after Lorca, of course, and she's uh, a well-known contemporary uh, Spanish poetess. And she's known to Amparo, my wife, poet, who uh, they exchange books together. And so we, we, we located this poem by Maria Salgado, um, on the theme of lullaby, where she says, lullabies tend to name a monster, you know, Coco, or terrifying danger to warn babies to protect themselves. When the listener begins to drift into sleep, the singer progressively omits words until the song disappears. The ideal lullaby, Lorca said, would be the one built with only two notes. So we're going to listen first of all to uh, Maria Sugado, and then afterwards uh, a small poem by myself, which is following the theme of lullaby, is called, is called Lullaby for Tomorrow. So, Tony, uh, yes. balls in your court. Thank you. Uh, Off we go. Thank you. 
peso como sierra, azul del cierre, el cierre, obsceno, el cieno, invierno, infierno, el cierre, oscuro, el peso, el duro, era muy duro, muy oscuro como duro, como peso, como sierra, azul del ciego, invierno, obsceno, infierno, el cierre, el peso, el duro, era muy duro. Oscura como dura, como peso, como cierre, azul del cielo, invierno, obsceno, oscuro, el cierre, duro, era. Oscura como peso, como cierre, como cierre, azul, oscura, dura, obsceno, infierno, era. Dura, muy dura. Como azul, hasta el invierno, era, cierre, dura, inverna, oscura, dura, muy dura. Oscura como cena era azul, oscura, hiberna, dura, dura. I can't hear. Como el cierre azul oscura era azul, muy dura, dura, muy dura. Como el cierre azul oscura era azul, muy dura, dura, muy dura. Como el cierre azul oscura era azul, muy dura, dura, muy dura. Como el cierre azul oscura era azul, muy dura, dura, muy dura. Como el cierre azul oscura era azul, muy dura. Thank you. Off to you again, Robin. Thank you so much uh, for bringing um, Maria's work, Maria's work to us. It's been fantastic. And um, yeah, it's, it's good to have work like this, um, very, very much in line with all the things that we do as well here in transforming with poetry. So um, we continue now with Robin. Robin himself is going to close, uh, bring to a close um, this part of the event, the main part. Uh, of the event. Antonio, we've got one more after Robin, remember? Uh, sorry, Mike. Okay, we, we're going to, um, Robin, um, can I ask you please to um, unmute? Can you ask me what? Unmute, that's fine, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, we have a poem now, a video poem from Robin um, called uh, Lullaby for Tomorrow. Uh, Robin, uh, would you like to say anything about Lullaby for Tomorrow? Uh, not much than I've already said, you know, this has just been uh, inspired in, in the theme of following Lorca after Lorca and in this following from Maria Salgado, I created this poem of lullaby 
for tomorrow with uh, that aspect that the lullaby has perhaps uh, a negative connotation towards it, a horrific, nightmarish connotation, as well as um, the um, bold to sleep uh, tranquilly for the child. Okay, off we go. We're going to play now. Thank you. Lullaby for tomorrow. Millions pay for stardust. A few moments sprinkled on the glass. Walk into transmogrification. Attachment shape our retrograde world all the monsters all the old gods all the monsters all the old gods our vision of the future which side are you on life on the planet Far away moments in the treetops, a bird of prey glides, the cradle will rock. In the treetops, a bird of prey glides, the cradle from where we stand we talk about our destination our seizure moments sprinkled on the glass walk into Transmogrification, trans transmogrification, trans transmogrification, trans transmogrification, trans transmogrification. Thank you. So now we're going to close with a poem by Jesus, written in 1971. Um, Jesus, yeah. <coughs> well, what's, what's happening with the sound, Antonio? It's, do you know what's happening? Uh, the sound is fine on my end. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. It's kind of echoing. Okay. Um, adelante, Jesús. Bueno, sí, yo que iba, bueno, que lo que me pidió Mike que recitara una elegía que yo compuse en el año 71, nada menos, en el 35 aniversario en agosto, en el 35 aniversario de la, del asesinato de, de Federico, que fue más o menos uno, unos meses antes de que te conocerlo yo a él, ¿no? Eh, Yo tenía aquí al lado porque quería enseñarlo este, este cuadrito que, que lleva muchos años eh, en, en, la, en mi biblioteca, eh, que es el que veis ahí es Mike, eh, y un poema suyo que me, que me dedicó cuando, cuando estuve visitándolo en Cambridge, que pasé allí un, unos días en Cambridge, en el Pembroke College con él, y, el, y tuvo ese detalle de... Que Y me ha acompañado siempre este cuadrito. Pero bueno, ya quizá no este fuera el de, 
de programa. Bueno, la elegía, la, la voy a recitar, me, la sé, me acuerdo de ella. Además, la recité recientemente en, 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 en Alfaca. Estuve por allí posiblemente pisando el, el, el terreno donde está Federico enterrado y lo recité a voz en grito y, un, y eso asusté, me parece, a un pastor que andaba por allí con su oveja. Bueno, dice así. Sonidos, lamentos de guitarra. Desgarrando bordones las manos verdes, un eco, tu poesía morena, bronca la voz de tanta tierra entre los dientes, hoy morenos para siempre. Tu sangre quedó en la acequia, hay nada mar llorando, delata perlas de corales finos que multiplican tu muerte desde la alfácar hasta la vega. Y al baicín levanta un túmulo de mitras y tricornios ensangrentados sobre la tumba inmensa de Alixares, dilatando el plomo de tu cuerpo abatido. Estiércol de olivo que rezuma aceite de la fuente grande. Verdugos de la colonia, Valdés, Ruiz Alonso, Keipo, Franco, muertos o vivos, el turbio darro se niega a lavar vuestras manos rojas, aunque pasen cientos de años. Os persiguen las alegres aceitunas y el clamor de un pueblo brutalmente asesinado. Os maldicen la soleá y la petanera y os denuncio yo, poeta de Al-Andalus, amante de Federico y de la pena negra que son muy pocos, 35 años. Eso es todo. Bravo. Ok, en inglés. Gracias. Elegy for, for Federico García Lorca on the 35th anniversary of his murder, so in 1971. London. 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 Guitars are weeping. Written in London. Green hands tearing at their bass strings. An echo, your dark poetry, your voice hoarse, with so many, so much earth between your teeth. Now dark forever. Blood in the ditch. Ainadama in tears scatters pearls of delicate coral which multiply your death from the alfaca to the vega. And a moon mound is raised in albay sin of mitres and bloody tricorn hats on the immense tomb of Alexares, swelling the lead of your slaughtered body, manure for the olive tree, oozing olive oil from the Fuente Grande, butchers of the Colonia, Valdez, Ruiz Alonso, Capo, Franco, dead or alive, the muddy darro refuses to wash your red hands clean for a hundred years to pass. The joyful olives hunt you down and the clamoring of voices of a people brutally murdered, the Solia and the Petanera curse you and I denounce you. Poet of Al-Andalus, lover of Federico and dark sorrow. How long, how short is 35 years? Muchas gracias, Mike. Muy bien, Mike. Estupendo, maravilloso. Gracias, Jesús. This is it. Gracias, Mike. Thank you, everybody. It's been wonderful. And, th and thank you, Antonio, as always. You're that you pulled all this together. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for uh, everybody and, yes. and for inviting me. Also. We're going to have a, a little break of uh, two minutes, a little comfort break, because uh, we will continue with a few more poems, only about 10, 15 minutes more of poetry with Anne Rhodes, Maggie Hall, Susan McCartney, and Robin Hislop.
So it will be only about 10, 15 minutes. Um, we wanted to keep the element of open word um, going on, even though the main focus was Federico Garcia Lorca. I think Federico Garcia Lorca would have loved to see these poems that are coming now. So don't go anywhere far. Uh, we'll be back in about uh, 90 seconds. Thank you. Okay, I haven't been counting. I haven't been counting the, the seconds. Uh, but as you can see, um, we have Anne uh, Anne Rhodes, and we're going to only to have one poem per participant in this second part. And Anne had a go at uh, translating poets, sorry, poems into Spanish. I will not ask you who your translator was. Yeah, Anne. Uh, but we, we, I looked at your poems and, uh, and the translations and I thought, you know, um, I think this one in particular is quite Lorcan. So um, would you like to, um, to read it, to start reading it in English, uh, Anne? Yep. And then I can do the translation to Spanish. I am going to alter the last verse just a tiny bit because I've seen a mistake, but... Oh. Daisies, daisy petals sprinkle verges, white stars herald springtime, golden centers, beauty lent us, white stars herald springtime. The daisies dance a little mime, they're so pleased to see us, the grass so green, their feet between, they're so pleased to see us. They delight as we make a fuss, each stands up like a queen. Plants courageous, they are gorgeous. Each stands up like a queen. They are the best flowers I've seen. Each little face merges. They dance a rhyme, keep perfect time. Each little face merges. Wonderful. And here is uh, my very, very quick translation. Um, very, very quick indeed, but you know, I can improve it next time. Margaritas. Pétalos de margaritas salpican los arcenes. Estrellas blancas anuncian primavera. Centros dorados nos prestan belleza. Estrellas blancas anuncian primavera. Margaritas bailan, nos hacen mimos. Contentas de vernos, sus pies se hunden en la hierba verde, contentas de vernos. Nuestro gozo les deleita, como reinas se alzan, plantas valientes, plantas preciosas, como reinas se alzan. 
No hay flores más hermosas, sus caritas se funden. Al bailar su cancioncilla, su tiempo perfecto, sus caritas se funden. Ok. It's, uh, I think it goes well with the theme, don't you think? Bonito. <laughs> Lovely in Spanish. Thank you. It's better in English, though. Thank you, Tony. Okay. Um, cheers. So now we have um, Maggie Hall, who is joining us from Australia, but I don't know if she's connected at the moment. Oh, yes, she is. Hello, Maggie. Yeah. How are you? Um, well, how are you? It's, um, thank well. you for having me here. Hello. It is early, so I've just been um, lying in bed listening. Oh, wow. What an in, what a what an incredible incredible morning it is here. Yeah. I'm just going to start um, by doing a quick a quick reading. I as I was listening, I just wrote down some notes, and this is in reflection to the first part um, before you, before the next. Uh, I've called it fear. Translations of yesterday's fame, haunting eyes, labyrinth of pain. The next injustice dressed in green, shadows tango through bitter tears in agony and rage, leaves exposing lichen or moss. How simple death is. Only the sparrow haunts dust today. Slowly, deeply, deeply play, in silence fade away. As man kills man to hide and gain, the fight lives on against the machine. As the labyrinth reigns, we begin. Okay, so that's just that bit that I just wrote um, while listening to the first part. Excellent. So Thank back you. to Thank you, you, Antonia. Lovely. No, I, I wanted to share uh, the text that you sent um, for the video we're going to watch, A Vision in a Dream. Yeah, and, um, from that, is, that is the text, the description. Um, now that it's there on the screen, would you like to say something? Oh no, I was just saying this was the um, edition. I don't know if you can see it. The edition yeah. that I e did an edit of and and um, and and did an edition from that you're going to see now. Okay, so uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to share the video now. Let's see. FM. So here we go. Video on. It was a lovely sight to see Lady Mary by the old oak tree, amid the jagged shadows of mossy leafless boughs, kneeling in the moonlight to make her gentle vows. Her slender palms together pressed heaving, sometimes on her breast, her face resigned to bliss or bale, her face, oh call it fair, not pale, and both eyes more bright than clear, each about to have a tear, eyes asleep and dreaming, alone, oh sorrow and shame, can this be she, the lady kneeling down by the old oak tree, and for the worker of these harms, that holds the maiden in her arms, to slumber still and mild as a mother with her child. A star hath set, a star hath risen. These arms of mine hath been the lady's prison. Thou'st had thy will by turn and rill, the night birds all that hour still. From cliff and tower, from wood clear fell, each dew. And see Lady Mary from out her trance, grow sad and soft and bright tears she sheds. Like a youthful hermitess, beauty in wilderness while praying in her sleep might the blood come back to her feet she hath a vision of her guardian saint her mother not near but in joy and woe the saint of man will call for the blue sky bends over all to force another so unlike each other to matter and mock a broken charm to dally with wrong that does no harm perhaps tis tender too and petty words felt within sweet recoil of pity by love's spoil. And what if in a world of sin such guided heart comes rage and pain? 
To matter and mock a broken charm, to dally with wrong that does no harm. Perhaps tis tender too, and petty words felt within sweet recoil of pity by love spoil. And what if, in a world of sin, such guided heart comes rage and pain? Who is the one to take this blame? Death now to journey. In Xanadu did Kubla come to state bird in his decree, where aft the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man, down to a sunless sea. So in five miles walk the fertile ground with walls and towers girdled round, and here where gardens bring sinuous kill to bless the incense bearing, tree and forest ancient as the hills and fold in spots of green, that deep chasm which slanted down the hill to thwart an ardent lover. A savage place, holy and enchanted, as the brother, beneath the haunted waning moon. The woman wailing for her demon lover from this chasm of seething turmoil, as if earth in fast thick pants were breathing, in moments a great flood forced amid the swift intermittent bursting. Huge fragments like rebounding hail, a forced grain beneath the thresher's flail, Amid the dancing sacred river, five miles meandering in a dance of hazy motion, through wood and dale a sacred river ran, reaching caverns measureless to man, and sank in commotion to a lifeless ocean. Amid the turmoil Kubla heard ancestral voices prophesizing wars, the shadow of a dome floating away on the waves, where it was heard a mingled pleasure from the fountain and the caves. "'Twas a miracle of rare device, a pleasured home with caves of ice. "'A damsel in a vision I once saw, a maid I loved on her dulcimer. "'She played singing of Mount Abora. "'Could I love her again? "'Her symphonious song with such deep delight would win me over. "'Twas the music loud and long that would build that dome "'and heat those caves of thinst and ice. "'And who could hear and see them there? would all cry, beware, beware, his flashing eyes, his flowing hair. So, weave a circle round him thrice, and close your eyes with holy dread, for he on honey dew hath fed, and drunk the milk of paradise. Okay, now. Wonderful, Maggie. I think it's actually Mount to bore, which is in Jerusalem. I, I, I believe that's what it was meant to be. But I read it as it was written, Mount Timbor. Anyway, who am I to <laughs> <laughs> change such a thing? But I would question it and say that there are some things that uh, aren't necessarily meant to be there yeah. in that way, written differently. Okay, Maggie. So. Um... Uh, we'll see you next time. Um, yes, we look forward to more work. Yeah. <laughs> the, video, the video that I have shown is now part of our collection in uh, Transforming with Poetry YouTube. Um, I only uploaded it a um, few minutes ago, so it has zero views. Well, now it has one view, but uh, you can also <laughs> see, look at these videos in uh, Transforming with Poetry in YouTube. And thank you so much, uh, Maggie, for you know, letting us share those videos in our channel. Thank you. It's a, it's an honor to be here to read for you. Thanks, Anne. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to um, move on now to um, Susan. Susan McCartney. Are you there, Susan? I am here. Hi. Hi. Hello. Well, this, hi. Well, this is about another great artist that belongs to the world. Um, an anguished person who again died tragically and it's Vincent van Gogh and it's called A Starry Night in Saint-Romain, 1889. In my mind the window is not barred, I gaze freely skyward to the east. They allow me freedom here to roam, to paint, at the asylum of St. Paul, saint Rome de Provence. Before the sun rises, I take my brush, my bright palette of oils. 
The night sky holds me mesmerized as blues, whites and yellows spin in my mind, swirling before my eyes in cosmic fusion. The stars hang like necklaces of furry pearls. The moon, a sharp yellow crescent, slices through soft whirling clouds of luminescence. In a frenzy, I paint before the vision fails and the sun gains dominion. Turbulent images pierce my brain. I let them in gladly, embracing the vortex, the chaos. The ochre moon blisters my perceptions. Diamond hard stars dazzle my senses. My voices urge me on. Hurry, Vincent, hurry. The sun, she comes, paint. Paint, paint. My work is done now. The scorching star rises, beating down, searing my retina. And I recall another starry night, fragranced with lavender. A cafe on a terrace, drinking absinthe with Paul and Theo as moonbeams danced with green fairies on tiled roofs. This I know. They will again ridicule me, pour scorn on me, my art and my life. Show no appreciation. Call me a dreamer. Call me mad. Should I destroy this daub before they have a chance to crow? The voices in my head will choose. Like old friends, they enter without knocking. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Susan. We Thank could you. translate this one into Spanish as well. I think uh, it would read very well. Okay, we, we're going to move on now to the last poem of the evening. Uh, this time closing, uh, Robin. Um, hello again, Robin. Hello. So we have a, a video poem um, by you, who um, you know, which which has been quite celebrated actually in uh, Twitter. I think um, Robin and I share yeah. things of each other in Twitter, and um, this one has been a particular success recently with lots of poets sharing this work. So um, would you like to say anything before I I go for it? Well, yes, I mean, the theme of, of this poem um, is, is just that, you know, it's uh, language and object, uh, the primal articulation, the gasp of the word and the grasp of understanding coming together. This is what it attempts to do this by sort of intensifying the word sequences in the first stanzas into compact form and meaning, and then rewriting again within that, rewriting again within that, so that uh, the illusions are created for the for the reader to unpack the image from. But that's basically it, you know, the primal articulation and the grasp of understanding. That's the thing. Mm. It reminds me of uh, the idea around recursion. Um, About the, what? what? It's, it's something called recursion, recursion. Ah, uh, recursion. Ah, well, um, no, I wouldn't say, you know, I'm not a fan of Chomsky. I would come <laughs> closer to Derrida than Chomsky. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's not really recursion when I'm talking about writing within writing, because I'm talking always very much about word and object and grasping the primal meaning, the primal articulation, rather than an innate idea, if I may say so. Yeah, no, no, no. It, it connects then with the, with the, one of the letters that we saw at the beginning. Uh, well, uh, not at the beginning, at the middle of the, of the poem. You know the Jack Spicer letter about translation and poetry, and looking for the real meaning 
rather than objectifying the word. Okay, let, let the poem speak. Here we go. Grass, grass from bone to throat, will warble like a flute at air, music uttered with a gas, and emptiness of hand in the space between what must become a fist against embedded stone, clenched class, strikes, bow, tool, tongue, pain, the softly surfaced mind, to map, disembodied, how it, they, slips beyond its grass, and air, Music utter with what must become. A fist maps disembodied how it they will warble like a flute, the softly surfaced mind to a gasp at emptiness against embedded stone, clenched, clasped, to grasp, from bone to throat, hand in space between strikes of bone, tool, tone, and pain, like a flute's emptiness against the embedded, softly surfaced vine. How in they will, from bone to throat, hand in space grasp with what must become between bone to abyss, map strikes at air, disembodied music, uttered. Thank you. What a broche de oro. Um, what a fantastic end to the program, to the to the event, Robin. Thank you so much. Much more complex than I was trying to describe in my in my clumsy ideas. Um, it's a wonderful um, it's a wonderful poem and a wonderful video as well. Great execution and uh, very inspiring as well. I'm, Many I thanks. Say, Many thanks. I must say that I'm planning in the next uh, days to launch a few video poems and I try to learn tricks from you. Thank right. you so much. Yeah. You know, you should upload them also to uh, Poets YouTube, to Sarah Russell, because the collection there is mounting up. Yeah, YouTube poems. YouTube poets, yeah. Right, yeah. Available to anyone who wants to send in video poems. Yeah, if anyone is interested in sending video poems or poems, let me know and I'll get you, put you in contact with Robin. Um, thank you so much, Robin. So we are, um, I think we are at the end of the event. Um, so just to remind our audience who's been here today and obviously our protagonist Lorca, Federico Garcia Lorca. Mike, would you say, would you like to say something? Say farewell to everybody. Look, it's been a wonderful evening. And thank you so much to everybody for, for, for the participation. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, that's everything for uh, from us. Uh, we'll see you in next Transforming with Poetry. 
keep an eye to our page in Facebook uh, for the date of the next event. Um, and I'm going to stop now the recording. Thank you so much. Bye, thank you, Mike.